Hello everyone, welcome back to Axangel RC and to yet another video due to popular demand. Today we will be taking an in-depth dive into the solar generator power station that I've built for my ground station which has also helped me quite a lot in a number of other applications and is one of the most versatile tools that I have at my disposal. However, Let's go back a year or two and start at the beginning as this particular project didn't come into fruition overnight. I have been testing the system in various shapes and forms for a while now trying to make sense of it all and to figure out what I might need to do with it, what I will need it to do for me and how I can get it working properly and reliably with the least bit of messing about and maintenance required during use. The first version of the system looked like this. Two foldable panels, a relatively small lithium ion battery made up of some recycled laptop battery cells, a pretty large MPPT solar charge controller, which was used only for the testing at the time it is now powering my workshop solar system. I got a smaller model for the solar generator and a big mess of wires. In time the project started to take shape in my head, I picked up a case and I did want the generator to be as small as possible while also being very capable, so also started buying bits and pieces as I figured them out and soon had pretty much most of what I was going to need. Of course, to get the maximum capacity in a small size, I went for brand new 18650 cells, and in particular the Samsung 35E. 3D printed some custom holders for them to fit in the case and assembled two packs. Each pack is 3S10P, or combined for the whole solar generator, it is 3S20P, which in the best of cases can be considered a 12 volt 70 amp hour battery pack, but realistically it is more like 65 amp hours when you don't discharge them below 3 volts per cell. There are two reasons why I built the battery in two separate packs. First is for the arrangement of the gear inside the case and on the lid. Basically this setup gave me the most space to work with and second I can easily at any time rewire this to a 24 volt system by only moving some wires around rather than rebuilding the packs. Most if not all of the gear in here is also compatible with 24 volts so this way of doing it gives me some flexibility should the circumstances and requirements for this generator change. The cells are connected with fuse wire to brass bus bars so should be able to take a pretty sizable load and not complain much. Also the fuse wire is going to burn out if a cell shorts thus protecting the whole pack. Overall I'm pretty happy how these turned out. As for the rest, I got the case whose size I thought would be perfect for this project and once I was happy with how stuff was going to fit in it, I got to drilling and cutting all the openings. Have to say, that was by far the most tedious task in this build and I'm not talking about the round holes, no, they were a breeze, I'm talking about everything else. Major pain, but I pushed through it. From there on, it was a matter of installing all the components and figuring out how to route all the wires so that everything would go through the main breaker and the sensor. Little by little, the box was coming together nicely. The only true MPPT controller which would fit in this space, won't break the bank and I was familiar with, was the smallest model in the EP EVA series, so I got one of those and programmed it with the parameters for a lithium ion battery making it so it wouldn't charge it over 4.1 volts per cell. By the way, all of the links for these items should be in the description of the video so go and check them out if you're interested. As you can see I do have a 30 amp relay switch here and it is there because during the build I wanted to put the MPPT charge controller and the solar panel on separate switches but it turned out that I only had one high current switch which I put on the solar panel but wanted to have a way to switch off the MPPT so it wouldn't draw on the battery when it wasn't charging and the workaround was to use the low current switch along with a relay so this little scheme was born and in fact it was my first time dealing with a relay, so I did learn something new. And so we come to this, the almost finished product capable of charging my largest planes batteries and as you saw in my previous video my whole ground station setup. Just to recap, I have two 12 volt outputs, 
two dual USB outputs which can be turned on and off via these switches. The power meter is just below that and the battery main switch for the whole case is to the right, big and red. Then right at the bottom we have the on off switch for the bug boost module, the display for it and the potentiometer is used to set voltage and current output on it. Moving on to the side I have three main outputs directly from the battery and in case I want to charge said battery with an external charger I can also plug it there so these can work as inputs too depending on the circumstances. These two outputs are for the bug boost module, voltage range is up to 32 volts and it can go up to 10 amps. And next to that the on off switch is for the solar panel input as well as its plug. On the front of the case is the MPPT solar charge controller on off switch. And now let's take a look inside. Yes, I know it is a bit messy when it comes to the wiring but it works okay and I haven't had any issues since I built it all. Could use a zip tie here and there and some wire holders but overall it is good. At the bottom here are the solar input switch, the MPPT switch and relay, the positive connection bus bar and of course the two battery packs. As you can see the balance plug from the battery packs is not connected to a BMS module and that is because I couldn't find a place for it so I didn't put one in. That being said, I regularly check the balance of the cells and plug in the ISDT balancer, but to be honest, they haven't really needed any balancing at all. They are always within 0.01 volt difference between the cells whenever I check on them, plus all the cells are fused. So if there's an issue with the cell, the fuse is going to burn and there is a lot of safety in that. Now moving on to the underside of the lid, right in the middle is the main ground bus bar which is fed by the battery's ground via the power sensor. I also have the ground from the MPPT solar charge controller coming through here which allows me to keep track of how much power is coming in and going out of the battery. I chose to go with soldering the wires here to everything rather than have connectors because soldering was the most compact solution and I wanted to have as much space available as possible between these points and whatever was below them. Only thing I have to add here are some fuses but everything has been working well so far. The blue PCB in the top left corner is the bug boost board, one of the items that gives this box a lot of versatility. As for that empty space below the power sensor, this is where the 220 volt inverter is going to go when I finally order one and install it. That is why the battery under that location is lying flat on the bottom of the case to make more room for the inverter's board to go there, hopefully always going to fit. I have surface mount plugs for that as well and will place a switch somewhere so it is not on all the time but only when needed. So a bit more cutting will be required but then it really will be finalized and even more useful. And just to get an idea of the usefulness of an MPPT solar charge controller, right now the panel is putting in 4.2 amps at 16 volts and in the process of converting that down to the voltage of the battery, which is 11.3, the MPPT is putting in 5.9 amps into the battery. In comparison, a PVM controller would have put in only that 4.2 amps in the battery, so almost 30% would be going to waste right now. This thing may be taking a whole lot of space in there but it's not like I have much else to use that space for and I do like making full use of that solar panel. An MPPT is the way to go for sure if you're looking for efficiency. Also seems like since this system started running it has generated 4.4 kilowatt hours of energy which is not bad for a small case with a 100 watt solar panel attached to it. I can also easily power my laptop from this system either through the bug boost module with a suitable cable or by supplying the 12 volts to a universal laptop charger with an adjustable voltage output to suit various models which in turn is plugged into the laptop and this thing can power it for at least 20 hours when fully charged even with no sun around to recharge it. So makes for a pretty neat Mavlink telemetry station too. 
Also, it has helped me a number of times to power a ton of various tools and non-RC related gear for testing or use, including my e-bike, which has been immensely useful, plus saved me a few times from being stranded with my car when the 12 volt lead acid battery in it started dying, so this helped get its voltage up on the road so it can start. It is worth every cent invested in it without that, but with it, this thing is invaluable to me. Like I said at the start, one of the most useful tools I have at my disposal. Also, like I already said, all links for the items used in the making of this generator are linked below. Most are affiliate links, which means that should you purchase anything through those links, I get a small commission at no additional cost to you which helps support this channel and my family. Another way you can show your support is Patreon, the link is also there, and a big thank you to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. Like, share and subscribe if you haven't already, also comment as that helps the video get seen more and the channel grow, and I will see you in the next one.